Hey guys, you don't want Sammy here, King of Gangnam, Gangnam Sammy, coming to you live. Getting ready for the end of the year. I just want to say a very, very happy holidays to everybody out there. Coming up on New Year's Eve in Korea. I got a special episode on January 2nd talking about New Year's Eve in Korea, what's going on, what's happening. Uh, it is muted this year because of COVID rules, so check in out on January 2nd afternoon. Uh, that video will be up. 8 to 1, Sammy, King of Gangnam, Gangnam Sammy, saying thank you to everyone who is subscribing, liking, and, and commenting. I love the comments. I look forward to your comment and answering your questions or just saying thank you. Please, if you like what you're seeing, if you like what you're hearing, make a comment. Uh, let me know what I could do better. I'm trying to do better, trying to make this channel a little bit more um, enjoyable for you guys. I was doing it for fun. I'm now doing it for you. Okay, so please help me out. Click that subscribe, click the like, share, comment. Love you all. Anyway, today we're talking about my retirement plan. I know this is not going to be helpful to anybody other than me but I do want to let everyone know who is following my channel on a personal basis because I do have some family and friends who do that so I want to update you all and let you know I am retiring it is 77 days I think 75 days March 11 is a tentative day I fly out Singapore Airlines to Chang no, not Chiang Mai, um, to Chennai Airport in Singapore, and then five hour layover, and then on to Colombo, where I land uh, late at night, I think 11.30 at night, and then I um, uh, will take a COVID test at the airport. All right, so let me take a step back. So I, as most of you know, have been in Korea for 13 years, and I work at an education company that, uh, I'm partners in and we are outsourcing uh, we're going to start outsourcing our manufacturing and labor of our content that we sell to the students the, the workbooks the kits and everything like that thousands are made every three months so we're going to outsource that to Sri Lanka the manufacturing and labor of that which is very expensive in Korea because of the labor cost and the real estate much cheaper in Sri Lanka, so that's what I'm going to manage and run, hopefully. Um, and the cost of living in, in Sri Lanka is much cheaper than it is here, and I have family there, and it's much warmer. <laughs> that's the number one thing. It's much warmer. Today, Sunday, December 26th, minus 20. Last night and, and tonight. Today... The temperature is probably about minus 10 right now, daytime, and it is 1 p.m., and it's like minus 10 outside. It's sunny, but it's cold, let me tell you. I got the heat going, the windows are all frosted up. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's much warmer there. I have family there. My parents have re been retired there for a long time, so, you know, it's time to go home. So, I, I, I thought of this plan, and I'm putting it together. So. Uh, I will depart. I, I, I was looking to go and spend a little few days or maybe a week in Thailand with meet some friends there. Uh, and it was all set to go. And then the government closed the quarantine free entry because of Omicron. It used to be you can take a PCR test before you arrive, one when you land, and five hours later, you're free to go as long as you're vaccinated. <coughs> in certain cities and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, cancel that until ja mid-January. We'll see if that changes, but I doubt it. Otherwise, I could have still flown, but the flight was like I landed, but the flight departs before I land. So I would have to wait 22 hours to fly out, which doesn't make sense. Then I was looking at other routes. Direct flights don't exist anymore. Korean Air doesn't fly anymore. Well, they, they might, but not. As of today, they don't. They might in March, but I gotta buy my tickets, you know, soon. Then uh, Sri Lankan Airlines flies direct once a week, but the price is astronomical. I fly business class on long haul. So, you know, 
one way flight is 2.5 million about you know about two thousand five hundred dollars that's just insane price for a one-way ticket that's what i pay for round trip on business class i mean i can get a round trip ticket on emirates a380 or a or the new 787 for around that price one way it's just it's just not worth it to me uh, and the airplane itself is not that good so then I was looking at Singapore Airlines. They have great plane, great service, and they have a visa-free travel, sorry, vaccine travel lane program. Uh, now that was for people who were entering the country or going to another country, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I was looking at the rules. They canceled that just last week. So now I gotta figure out, is it still allowed for transit passengers? Because I only transit for like five hours. From a Singapore airline to a Singapore airline. I don't want to change airlines because that causes so much trouble. Because each airline has different rules. So I just want to go with one airline. So their price is good. I'm checking them out. Otherwise, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll just spring for the cost and fly on Sri Lankan Airlines and bite the bullet on that one. But, so the, the, the plan is if I fly Singapore Airlines, I leave in the morning, on Friday morning. I will get rid of my apartment sell everything or give it away um, especially the clothes and everything like that I will keep a few winter clothes and I'll store them here at my friend's house at, at the office just in case you know um, but you know everything I've acquired over the last 13 years like most of my furniture is 10 years old my bed my electronics TV and everything 10 years old nobody's gonna buy that I gotta give it away I'm gonna give it away to friends uh, some of the newer things I'm going to try to sell or barter with the landlord because I still have two months left on my lease. Sorry, 14 months left on my lease. So, um, no, no. Is it 14 months or two months? Two months. Two months. I signed a one-year lease. So I have two or three months left. So in exchange for giving up, I will give her, you know, like, the humidifiers, dehumidifiers, filters, fridge, washing machine, curtains, everything like that, that she doesn't have to, you know, she can make it kind of semi-furnished. Um, she's really cool. She's been kind to me. So I'm hoping we can negotiate that. Otherwise, I don't really mind paying to get out. I, I got to get out of here. Uh, so I fly out. I land, I take a PCR test before I go. I'm gonna do, I can do it 48 hours before. It's not a problem. There's places around here I can do it. Uh, it's gonna cost me about a hundred bucks to do because you have to get the special one and you have to get it in English and everything like that because when I land in Sri Lanka, I have to present that. I'll get another PCR test at the airport which will be provided to me a few hours later. I'll get my SIM card, head over to a hotel, a resort near my parents' house and spend 48 hours there and I'll take another PCR test uh, after the 24 hours after the first one and then I have a couple of those home test kits which I will do you know just before I get to my parents house and then when I get to my parents house I will continue to wear a mask for at least three days four days just to be sure that I'm okay the other thing I'm gonna do is uh, I got my third booster shot a week ago um, which means that uh, December, January, February, March, before I leave, it'll be three months. I'm going to double check with my doctor if I can get another booster shot, a fourth one, because I'm pretty sure the government is going to make those announcements to get a fourth booster shot. But I'll see what I can do to try to, you know, even without recommendation on my doctor's recommendation, I'm going to see if I can get because I got the Moderna, which is a half dose. And according to the research I've done, even someone getting a full dose is even better. So if I go three months and I ask him for another half dose, I think that'll be good. So I'm gonna try that um, at least two weeks before I fly out so that it has time to, you know, because it's the flight that's going to be the riskiest time. And I'm gonna be masked up, shielded up, and like in a try to get a bubble soup and I'm gonna be in business class I'm gonna be away from everyone and so I'm gonna be very careful flying just to make sure that I'm not 
infect it because I don't want to infect my parents. So anyway, I will be in Sri Lanka and the first couple of weeks is, you know, registering my residency, getting everything set up, um, uh, bank accounts, phone, every, you know, getting all those government things done. So then I will uh, start to set up my business, get that all taken care of, all set up. By April, we'll be operating, we'll be running. And the plan is to start to, you know, s develop this project slowly at the beginning. And whereas my Korean operations will continue to manufacture locally, I will supplement and slowly it will start to go like this. And then I will take over completely within three months. Over the course of a year, our business will expand because COVID will be over by then and our business will ramp up and production will ramp up which means I will have to move operations to a bigger office space bigger warehouse more employees and at that point within three months that's gonna happen within a year I will need to hire a manager and train a manager to take over day-to-day -day operations where I will take a step back and become you know the CEO um, within three years Again, I will need to take another step back, hire a new CEO or promote from within and build an infrastructure where the company can operate without my oversight. And then within five years, three to five years, these operations will be so good that we can sell this idea of outsourcing to uh, Korean companies. So have a Korean company selling outsourcing to a Korean company. I think that that would be a niche as opposed to these Korean companies going to Chinese or Philippines or whatever to get their outsourcing done. Um, and that's how I will earn a living um, till the day I die. Um, so that's the retirement plan. Um, again, because the cost of living is so cheap in Sri Lanka, you know, I can, I can work for the next year living no problem because there's not going to be any traveling not for another year right so you know when this time next year is when i'll probably go meet friends we'll meet up in thailand philippines we'll all just like all meet there as opposed to me going or them coming to sri lanka and, you know we'll go someplace where we can all have fun on a beach somewhere warm it'll be great and i can do that you know, two or three times a year now, uh, starting in 2023, I think. I'll be able to do it two or three times a year is travel. And that's going to be the fun part is, is, is being able to be financially free to travel and visit friends all over the world. On this side of the world, I doubt I will ever, ever get back to North America. I really doubt it. Maybe, but there's just real, no real reason to go there. Um, I would like to I'd love to go back. It's just there's no reason. It's just it's the cost and the hassle and just Why you know, there's there's no life for me back there, but That's in the future my retirement plans. That's it I really want to thank everybody for watching right to the end appreciate it click that like button click that subscribe Share the love. Taiwan Sammy King of Gangnam. I'm out